welcome back to the Badass Network and this episode of Will It Voorhees. Uh, anyway, um, I've been doing a lot of Will It Voorheeses. You can kind of see some of the ones I have back here and around. I just haven't done uh, more. It's been live on Twitch, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Vinny Ratlock. So you can watch it there if you ever want to see the live stuff. What I've been doing is I've been writing lists of masks and other items, rolling dice to see what it is I have to try to turn into a Jason mask. Now, you guys have seen plenty of this with the milk jug and the Dollar Tree mask and whatnot. But uh, I've spiced it up a bit. and We've been doing it live on Twitch. But I have a more um, shorter version that I'm going to present to you. And we rolled the dice and we ended up getting this guy to roll. It's called Reaper of the Night. It is a part of the Midnight Creatures Collection uh, adult size mask. They, they sold it Meyer for, I want to say, like $9.99 or something like that. It's it's a very big knockoff of the screen mask, as you can tell. And I've already previously done a screen mask. So uh, when I rolled this, I was like, oh, okay, I, I enjoyed doing that. Let's see what we can do with this kind of version. And um, I did. And so um, I guess let's watch it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the hood from the mask because uh, with the regular Jason mask style, it, there's no hood involved. And the hood is being uh, attached through some kind of hot glue. So fabric was easy to take off. The main issue was taking the glue off the mask itself, which I ended up using a, a, a hooked Zacto blade to peel it off with. Um, and then after that, I'm going to um, use 100 grit sandpaper to uh, sand the entire mask so that it would have an easier job picking the paint up and making sure that it sticks to the mask because it had that uh, chrome film on top of it and if it was just that eventually the paint wouldn't stick so there you have it and that's why i'm doing the sanding right now Okay, so at this point, I grab the Sharpie, and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, marking the holes, which are going to become the holes in the mask. I'm not going to go verbatim, especially across the mouth area, because that mouth is right there. And yeah, after I mark the holes, I'm going to go ahead and just start with poking the holes with this little uh, heat gun apparatus. Um, when I do custom masks like these, I don't always... Uh, use a drill sometimes I'll leave the holes small but I wanted the holes a little bit bigger so as you can tell I'm now drilling the holes out um, and I'm using a 3 8 uh, inch bit to put those holes in so I think it's, it was a decent decent enough size with uh, what we're doing and like I said there's only a couple holes that I didn't do but it still has most of the exact pattern of a Jason Voorhees mask um, so right now I've taken the heat gun again uh, before I do the base coat of paint and I am basically using it, dragging it across the plastic of the mask, causing uh, some wear, some damage, some like slashing, cutting and whatnot, because I, I tend to never make my mask clean, especially like a Jason mask or a Jason style mask. I like to show that there has been damage, you know, Jason goes, he runs, well, he doesn't run, but he goes through the woods you know, slapping tree branches, everything like that. People do fight back. And now we are using a base coat spray paint. This is almond. Uh, you can get as long any color or any kind of spray paint, as long as you get the color almond, it is like the best uh, base coat for any kind of a hockey mask. And so I went ahead and used that as well for this. Now the, the uh, chevron, uh, I use different methods of putting on chevrons. I've used 3D paint, I've used vinyl, uh, I've used acrylic paint, and today I just decided I wanted to use this uh, alcohol marker. It's acid-free, so if you ever had it out in the sunlight, it won't uh, fade out. It will stay on pretty strong. And, you know, I'm, I'm being a little, having a little fun with how the, uh, the top chevron goes because I want it to kind of, fit along the uh, little, uh, the raised up parts of the eye to fit on that. 
and I thought about it and I thought, yeah, let's go ahead and put the side chevrons on as well. Um, I like, I normally like putting just the top chevron on, but I thought there was enough space that uh, side chevrons would look good on as well. All right, so we're now aging and weathering the mask. I'm using two main colors, burnt umbra and a raw sienna. Raw sienna is what I put on first. It has kind of like a nicotine yellow to it, and I'm using a wet rag uh, or paper towel to dab it on and kind of wipe it off a little bit, smooth it all out throughout, and I go layer after layer after layer, uh, mostly with the raw uh, sienna first and then the burnt umbra after that. And now you'll see this is a watered down brush that I've dipped a little black paint into. And I use this special brush of mine to uh, fill in all the different cuts and crevices and whatnot. And then once again, I wipe it back off so that you see the, uh, the crevices and the cuts and the carvings are all very defined now. Um, and the paint comes off pretty easy. And it does take some of the other paint off too, but like I said, I paint in layers. That is one of the most important parts when you're making something to look very weathered is you just keep constantly putting on and taking off paint all the time. You got to give it that weathered look and you can't just paint a little bit on, paint a little bit on and then leave it. No, you need to constantly put paint on, wipe paint off, put paint on, sand paint off uh, and just keep going at it like that. Now this brush I made specifically for doing this kind of stuff for a, uh, especially uh, with dry brushing or damage brushing. And I'm gonna do a tutorial on how you make a brush like this because they don't have brushes like these just readily available at any hobby shop or painting shop. Uh, this is custom made. And I plan to do a, a YouTube video on how I made this brush. Because I, I, done, I done a video before live, uh, but I never saved that video. So I lost it. So I'm just, and it's about time that I make another brush. I've had this brush for about a year. And now I'm taking the same brush, um, lighter uh, areas, and I am accenting all the uh, holes now. So, and it's dry brushing. I barely have any paint on the brush, and I am going over all the opening areas, the nostrils, the holes carved in the mask and the eyes, and I do it so that I bring it downward, kind of like if you're sweating or anything like that, um, sweating through the mask, any, nasty dirt being sweated out and through the holes that's what it would do it, it would go downward you wouldn't sweat through a hole and suddenly the the dirt and nastiness go upward so i always do downward strokes <clears throat> on the mask now the mouth out of the nostrils the eyes all of it um, because that's pretty much and i i love how uh this brush also works on doing that you know it gives it almost like a natural um, just an, just a naturalness when it comes to uh, having the staining coming out of the holes. All right, so the last step is adding drippage and I'm using the uh, dirty water basically that I rinse my brushes off in to run down first, let it dry, and then I take this uh, stage blood, let it run down as well so that we can get a good bloody, gory uh, look on the mask as well. Just let it dry and then it's done. Well, clear coat too, but I didn't film that part.
Okay, so now at this point, usually it's me wearing the mask, showing it off and everything, and then talking about it. Um, I don't have that. I, uh, this is just the second version of that. I don't have it because I took photos of it and posted it uh, online and already sold it. Uh, somebody already bought it and they wanted it as soon as possible. And because I was so excited about selling it, I didn't even think about doing the whole post look at my face look at me wearing it and i never <laughs> it's kind of weird now that i'm thinking about it i never got to wear it i never got to put it on once it was finished so man it sucks i usually wear all the mess that i make and i didn't put this one on it's the first one that i completed that i never got to wear first it immediately went into a box and got shipped out uh to houston texas it's going to be used i guess in an escape room so that's kind of cool um, but there you have it. Hopefully you, you liked it and you saw the images of the mask. If not, here's another image right there and right there and right there and right there. Um, it was great. Yes, it did Voorhees and people watched me do it live in front of them and they all enjoyed it as well. So if you want to see me do this kind of thing live, I've been making all kinds of masks and other props and stuff. And I've been having a blast doing it on twitch.tv slash Vinnie Ratbox. So you can check it out there. If not, just sit tight and it'll pop up here. As long as you make sure that you subscribe and you also ring that bell for all notifications. So, it's 2023. Let's have an awesome year, alright guys? We'll see you again.